of mine, Coolio Coolio, brought this to my attention um, yesterday, I think, or a couple days ago, and I wanted to give you a little, <laughs> a little shocker, actually, blow you down. So this is a university, like, let me see what it says here, it's a student-run magazine for the U of I. Now, I'm going to cruise up here past a few things first because I want to show you something. A price to pay. College students share their methods of making quick cash as, as expenses. Okay, forewarning. The kitty is being very, Eddie is being very talkative today. Aren't you, Eddie? Eddie? Now you're ignoring me? I guess so. It won't take him long. He's a talker. Okay. So where was I? Oh, yeah. Right about here. Are those panties she's pulling out of that? Oh, wait. Is she putting in a Mandela envelope? Wait a minute. You can't be... No, you can't be serious. Wait a second. Hmm. Let's read this. <laughs> okay, fine. Sorry. A price to pay. College students share their methods of making quick cash as expenses grow. A worn down down jacket might sell for 15 bucks at a local consignment store. Donating plasma. Ooh, that's some tough. That's some tough stuff right there. Um, donating plasma might lend an extra 50 bucks. A used pair of underwear can sell online for up to $300. You heard it here. $300. Are they ransacking freaking cars for underwear? Remember Pandy Girl? <sighs> yeah. Kind of makes you wonder. Eddie's back. What? What you doing? What? What? Hello? Hello? <laughs> what? You want to get a head rub? There you go. He likes his head. He'll he'll give you a headbutt like no other cat will give you a headbutt. <laughs> a loving headbutt, but it's still a headbutt. Okay. So, each of these money-making strategies can be utilized by college students in need of quick cash. There are many different ways to earn money as a college student. While some ways might be more favorable than others, each lends a little or a lot of money to help push through school year. The calculated tuition for an Idaho resident at the University of Idaho is $21,300. This includes room, board, class, and other daily living expenses, according to U of I's website. Anyone working a minimum wage job might or must work over eight hours every day for a year to pay tuition. Yeah. In 2015, medium earnings, median Median earnings of bachelor degree recipients age 25 and older with no advanced degree working full time were $24,600 or 76% or 77 higher than those of high school graduates, according to collegeboard.org. In terms 
of the cost of going to school and the amount of financial aid that is available, the federal financial aid programs have not kept pace with the attendance costs, said the longtime financial aid office director, Daniel Davenport. Forty years ago, students were able to work part-time during school or the summer and work would pretty much pay for their schooling. Students are placed in situations where making money in new and alternative ways outside of the hourly paying job can make the difference between attending school or dropping out. And these students make the choice to invest in their future, he said. There are some people who want that degree so bad that they are willing to just about do anything for it. Now, I want you guys to know, this particular article was written in 2018. Uh Uh-huh. Can you imagine what the things they'd be saying nowadays? Crazy. There's the clothes in the box. Clothes in the box. Okay. Hand-me-downs. Open for nearly eight years in Moscow, the Storm Cellar offers college students low-cost, high-fashion clothing and pray and pays for used clothing. Sorry, you guys. This is super duper small on my side. I mean, I'm talking really small. So I'm having, it's a struggle for me even trying to read this. In fact, I should go grab, let me see. If you guys saw what I was doing, you'd laugh your ass off. Okay. Students high fashion. It's a big return for people's stuff compared to the amount of work you put into it said Austin Storm, owner of the Storm Cellar. The Storm Cellar pays its consigners 50% of what the item sells for. That's enormous, you guys. That's actually really cool that they're doing that. The store currently has 4,000 active consigners and it's had over 9,000 during eight years in operation. Wow, that's, you know, that's really cool of them. I'm going to commend those people on that. It's hard to make good money in this state and at this, and this age, at this age and on a college campus and have good hours. Along with cutting costs, Storm said the store aims to mitigate textile waste. So much of landfill waste is textile waste, so no longer will we can maintain the lifestyle, the more we can minimize our environmental impact. Storm was a college student before opening the business and said he understood the financial struggle many students face. The storm seller definitely grew out of college money activity, college making activity, Storm said. Roughly three three thirds of the storm seller's consigners are college students. I think it's really a good trade off. College students are busy and it allows them to be in a cycle of buying things at the store and selling them. And this guy cornered the market. I mean, that's how it should be done. This guy should be the freaking president of the university, man. Sounds a lot. Yeah. In your veins. While some people might sell bunches of clothes. Others look into an alternative approach, plasma donation. According to Green Cross America's website, plasma is commonly used to help with immune system deficiencies, burn victims, liver conditions, or or bleeding conditions. A month, um, should I say among? among other, it should be among. I'm like, what a month? Among other items. <laughs> oh my God. The closest plasma donation center for college students is on the Palouse. On the Palouse is at the GCAM Center in Pullman. Once eligible to donate, the facility offers a, a varying amount of payment depending on the number of donations, said the manager Tim Taylor. Once they donate the first time here, they will get fifty bucks. For their second donation, they'll get seventy-five. After that, if you donate twice a week, you get twenty-five for the first donation and forty for the second. Wow. The payment people receive has increased over time, he said. The price we pay people has gone up because it has to with the cost of living and different things, Taylor said. Well, these people are actually a lot smarter than we've been talking about. Roughly 60% of the facility's donors are college. College. Students. (laughs) Some stuff. Um. Yeah, college students. So based on the survey taken last year at the GCAM facility, a large amount of second and third year students students donate their first years, donate 
than first year students. So a large amount of second and third year students donate more than the first years. So Taylor said he thinks this may be due to a decline in financial support for older students. I believe this might be because of their parents pulling away and giving them more financial independence. No matter their financial background, plasma don donation has become a popular money-making method among students. Cameron per Purdom, a Moscow community member, searched for ways to pay for college and stumbled upon plasma donation. Af after taking time from off from UI, Purdom said plasma donation became the best choice because he felt he was helping others. That's true. That's good. A lot of students and myself, for instance, are in a tight situ financial spot, and I would have almost done anything for extra money to continue college. Purdom said he is currently taking time off to handle personal matters as well as student loans. Wow. No one should look at these ways of making money as a bad thing because they are there for you to use at your disposal, just as everything else is, Purdom says. I encourage people, if they are in a stressful situation, to look into it and decide if it's best if it's the best bet for them. So panties for profit. With a growing online sales world, students are now able to make money in ways they might not even imagine. Websites exist that allow people to sell used underwear from their home to people around the world and make a profit. My friends and I were talking about how we really wanted to study abroad in Europe, but in the meantime, I didn't have a job and I had been applying, but no one was hiring, Jane said, Jane Doe. I really needed to, to make some money like, and I like a lot of it as quickly as I could. Panty deal dot com is not new to Jane and her friends. We were sitting there joking about it, but we all kind of gave gave each other that, you know, look, we could actually do that, Jane said. Some of the requests made on the website can be disturbing, Jane said, but but buyers offer large cash compensation for underwear worn for a week, underwear worn in specific locations, or underwear with bodily fluids. Ugh. There was one guy on there that literally said he was he would pay big bucks, Jane said. Uh, although Jane did not follow through with making sales through the website, the consideration shows the situation she placed in that shows that the situation she was placed in to have her contemplating the option. It's hard to make good money in this state and at this age and on a college campus and have good hours, Jane said. As college as college education becomes a requirement for finding a career and living comfortably some extraneous extravagant extraneous financial <laughs> i said it three times different ways now financial des decisions are made from something as minor as consigning an old jacket to donating plasma donating plasma college students have found ways beyond an hourly job to make money to sustain their lifestyle wow you guys So this brings me to the, you know, what we've all seen with the OnlyFans and with, um, well, it would seem we're getting, getting a bit of a storm here ourselves. So it might be a little loud in the background. Um, so coming off that last one with the selling the panties and all that stuff and knowing that it's huge, the OnlyFans stuff is just, just huge. Um, you know, for college students, for, I mean, for everybody, but I mean, college for sure. Anyway, it says OnlyFans, this is actually, this is August 20th of 2021. It's OnlyFans says it will ban sexually explicit content. I call bull crap on that. CNN, OnlyFans is banning sexually explicit content, content starting in October, the company announced Thursday, in order to ensure the long time sustainability of the platform and to continue to host an inclusive community of creators and fans. We must evolve our content guidelines, the company said. <laughs> What's it doing, baby girl? Um, she I'm not stop playing with her and it's just started raining. Oh, it's starting to come down, isn't it? What is that noise? Um, so the, the company uh, to must evolve our content guidelines. The company said in a statement, adding that the changes come after Silver. Oh, sorry about the dog. I'm at the wait. 
as soon as I push the pause button. Oh, <laughs> he stops and then he starts to push play. God damn it. Okay, we'll see how this works. If I'm moaning and groaning, it's because my, where I got stung, it's pretty bad. Actually, I just got a thing ice to ice it down. It's been really bad. Okay. Okay, so where was I at? So, I'll go, in order to ensure the long term sustainability of the platform and to continue to host an inclusive community of creators and fans, we must evolve our content guidelines. The company said in a statement, adding that the changes come after requests from banking partners and payout providers. That's interesting. It's a massive shift. What are you doing, little girl? <laughs> Wants to play. It's a massive shift for service that has become a major space for adult content as a as the creator economy has exploded. The other social platforms OnlyFans allows its creators like other social platforms, OnlyFans allows its creators to either offer content for free or else wall their live streams, videos, and messages behind paid subscriptions. Creators can also earn revenue through tips or paid messages. Hmm. The website, which is founded, was founded in 2016, says it has 130 million users, you guys. That's crazy. Little girl, you should be get up there. Um, it pays more than five billion to its creators whose numbers whose number is more than 1.5 million each year. Wow. OnlyFans markets itself as a place where photographers, music, musicians, makeup artists, actors, and other creators can earn part or even full-time incomes. Gosh, stop barking. But it is known, it is best known as a haven for sex workers and influencers wanting to promote and sell access to adult content. The company on Thursday said it would still allow creators to post nudity as long as it is consistent with our acceptable use policy, even though it was banning what it called the posting of any content containing sexual ex explicit conduct. Now, this does it, does this make sense to you guys? I guess, I guess, I mean, the user, the use policy prohibits violence, you know, the R word, and lack of consent, among other content. It also bans a depiction or promotion of escort services SEX trafficking or prostitution. OnlyFans said it would be sharing more details in the coming days. We will actively support and and guide our creators through this change in content guidelines. The company added in its statement, the decision has was met with criticism, with some com comparing it to blogging platform Tumblr's move in 2018 to ban images and videos featuring adult content, including pornography. Experts at that time said, said the sweeping ban threatened to alienate communities, including the L LBTQ users, I mean, LGBTQ users, users um, and sexual assault survivors and sex workers who used the service to connect with each other and talk about safety issues. They're going to ban those now? Oh. Others questioned what the OnlyFans decision would mean for sex workers who depended on the platform for income. OnlyFans would be nothing without the sex workers who labors, whose labor built it up into a major platform, tweeted Kim Kelly, a journalist who covers labor laws. Now it's tossing them aside and removing a vital source of income from a, popula from a population of workers who are disproportionately uh, marginalized and have no protections under the U.S. law. Yeah, one like about that. No, 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 they don't. Donation. That's a big donation. Well, there you have it. So, I don't think they're following the guidelines. <laughs> Who monitors this stuff? <laughs> okay, anyway, all right. I'm heading back out, and I'm going to get this video up. I hope. Okay. Love y'all. And what do you think about that uh, school magazine they put out there? U of I. I wonder if they if they say anything, like if they, uh, if there's some type of stipulation, what you can have in there and what you can't have in there from the university itself. Because this is what seems weird to me. Is that they can do that kind of stuff. 
put that kind of stuff in there, which is really, I mean, it's harmless in a way, but it's not in a way. I mean, it, it, it can lead to more, put it that way. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I mean, as it is probably more than likely harmless, but you know, there's something like that always leads to something that uh, not always, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, um, I'm just wondering, like, who checks off on that and says, okay, this is good that you could put the University of Idaho's name on it. That's the thing. It's their name on it. And that's what's got me inter interested in what they would think about it because, you know, it's promoting them in a way, you know, not in a way, it is promoting them. So, uh, yeah, okay. All right, love you guys. Bye.